morning, everybody. Um, so this morning, um, as Paul just mentioned, I'm going to talk to you about the IPA's Touchpoints project. Um, and I'm going to talk to you particularly about something new that we're doing with IPA Touchpoints in the area of mobile passive measurement. Um, before I go into that, I think I should just give you some background to the survey so you've got some idea of what it is and how it works. So Touchpoints has been going since 2006. We do the survey every two years. It's made up of two data sets. Firstly, the hub, which is really all about understanding audiences, people, what people are doing, where they are, who they're with, what they think. And then the second part is the channel planner, which allows us to analyse cross-media channels. And that is touch points in those two parts. And I'm not going to go into great detail about um, the research methodology, um, but what I should just say is a little bit about it in terms of how we do it. What we do is we send people a self-completion, old-fashioned paper self-completion questionnaire about 55 pages long, asking them all sorts of questions about how they spend their time and what they think about media and how they use media. And in addition, we also currently send them on a PDA. Does anyone remember a PDA? On a PDA, a, a diary which asks literally for each half hour through the day where they are, what they're doing, and who they're with. And the combination of that diary data and the self-completion questionnaire gives us that hub information. We then take that hub information and we fuse or integrate onto it all of our industry trading currencies. Um, and I hope you're familiar with some of these, but, but basically if I work round from Barb, TV, Outdoor, Online, Regional Print, TGI for Product and Brand, Fame for Cinema, Rajar for Radio, NRS for Magazines and Newspapers, and just to mention that Touchpoints was explicitly designed to act as a hub so that people could actually integrate their own data onto the survey. So that's what Touchpoints is. Where we don't have industry data, we model from the self-completion questionnaire for SMS and Direct. So if I could only show you one chart which really explains what the hub does, this is it. It gives you a full 360 degree view of who your target market is. So we know what the demographics are, age, sex, class, all that kind of stuff. We know what products and brands people buy because we fuse to TGI. We know from the diary where people are, how much time they spend at home, at work, out and about. We know who they're with, how much time they spend with their partner, with their children, how much time they <coughs> spend alone across a day or a week. We also know what media they're consuming at any given time, how much and for how long. And finally, we know what their day-to-day -day activities are. And I think you'd agree that if we know all of that, we have a complete 360-degree view of who our target market is. Touchpoints is also really useful for context. And just listening to the two previous papers, um, I think Touchpoints adds beautifully to this because it's about when people are using their mobile phones and how they're using their mobile phones. And in, in what sense, what, what else is going on around that activity? And this chart just puts into context talking on a mobile with other media consumption. So you're looking along the side at reach, so how many people are doing it, and then along the bottom at time. So you can see that in terms of reach and time, talking on a mobile is actually taking, reaching is done by more people and takes more time than say reading a newspaper or a magazine. We can also understand more about where we are when we use mobile phones. And about 59% of mobile phone time is spent when we're at home. So although we think about mobile phones as being used principally when we're out and about, actually in terms of the time, it's when we're at home. And about a quarter when we're at work. So if we look at the at home, that's the at home picture. That's at work, that's at school, elsewhere indoors and elsewhere outdoors. So it's giving us a complete picture of how and when people are using their mobile phone. 
We can also look at when people are using their mobile phone and accessing the internet at the same time. And again, thinking about their location. And you can see that enormous peak at home, that sort of purpley peak uh, in the evening. And the red peak at lunchtime is at work. Um, so pretty much as you'd expect. But ma absolutely massive amount of um, mobile phone usage in the evening when there's so much else going on as well. What are people doing when they're on their mobile phone and using the internet? Well, principally, social networking, using email, and general surfing and browsing. And interestingly, um, Touchpoints is telling us that things like looking at newspaper content sites or magazine content sites is still pretty, not actually taking that much time. Watching TV, not that much time. What about attitudes? What attitudes do we have towards mobile phones? And this is looking at 15 to 24s who are very much driving this market. And you can see increasingly using their mobile phone to visit social networking sites, recording programs and watching them on their mobile, and trusting advertising messages they receive <coughs> on their mobile phone. So lots of very positive attitudes towards using mobile. This is some work, I just want to finish up with this introduction that The Guardian have been doing um, across platforms. And I think it just makes the point beautifully about how we're using mobile. The Guardian's progressive audience is now multi-platform. Our open strategy is leading us to new ways of talking to them and new ways of engaging advertisers. We can help advertisers reach audiences more directly and connect with them more powerfully. Instead of media planning, buying and measurement in silos, you can now plan, buy and measure around audiences. What does this mean? For the first time, advertisers can perform cross-platform reach and frequency analysis on media schedules encompassing The Guardian's entire cross-platform portfolio. How? by accessing The Guardian's Audiences Not Platforms version of Touchpoints 4 through Telmar's Media Planner software. Step 1. Define your target audience. Step 2. Select your Guardian platform from 25 different online channels. The Guardian's mobile site, our Android app, our iPad app, The Guardian and Observer, our various magazines, and our Guardian Select ad network. Step 3. Start planning. Want to reach ABC One Men? Five insertions across The Guardian, Observer and Weekend Magazine, plus 7.5 million impressions across Guardian.co.uk, The Guardian mobile website, iPad app and The Guardian Select Network reaches 2.5 million ABC One Men, or a 1 plus reach of 17.2%, with 53 GRPs and an average OTS of 3.09. Enter agency rates, plan your budget. Audiences, not platforms, be part of the future. I think that says it really, that it, it is about understanding mobile, but it's a really about understanding audiences uh, and understanding the platforms that people are using at any time, any place, anywhere. So moving on to, massive, to passive mobile measurement, last year we did a test where we moved from this outdated PDA technology. We thought, well, we've really got to change what we're doing and think about using smartphones as a means of collecting diary data. So we did a test, and really it was a test to see if the technology would work. And I'm pleased to say that, yes, it did. It worked across all operating systems. The data that we got was highly comparable with the diary data that we already had. So we're looking at real-time data with diary data, which is, as a researcher, is incredibly pleasing. Um, it was rated as a good experience by our respondents, and we had a really good response for the passive app. So what we did was we said we recruited about uh, 150 people, and we said, Will you download this app onto your smartphone and it carries a diary and you fill in the diary for a week? And would you also consider 
allowing this app to collect data passively on your mobile phone. So really, really exciting for us to be able to start thinking about how we could collect passive data. So we think that the benefits of mobile passive measurement are enormous. It gives us a level of detail that you couldn't get through old-fashioned paper questionnaire or even old-fashioned PDA diary technology. It complements and enhances the touch points data we have already, and it picks up, above all, unconscious behaviour. So how much time do you really spend on Facebook, on your phone? Uh, and how, how long or how, how much time do you spend writing text messages? And if you're skipping between Wi-Fi and 3G, when are you doing it? Do you do all your heavy lifting work when you're Wi-Fi connected, or have you got such a great contract that you don't care? Um, and of course, it gives us, begins to give us detailed brand exposure. We pick up every website and app that's being visited, um, and it will also obviously pick up how many times people are seeing mobile advertising. And of course, lastly, and not least, location. So the benefits are enormous. And I just want to take you through some of the results we got from the test. And bear in mind, this was only based on about 150 people, but we are going to go ahead and do this for the next survey, and we'll have considerably more uh, sample. So this gives you as an example, this is a real person um, who worked with a research contractor, and it gives you an idea of the level of granularity that we can go to. We know, uh, for example, this person is called Chris. We know when Chris gets up because he sets his alarm. We know when he checks his emails, and we know how often he checks his emails, and we know how many emails he's looking at. We know when he's going to news <coughs> sites, if he's going to a UR, via a URL or via an app. We know <coughs> where he is at any given time. So we, this gives us an enormous level of granularity about one person. <coughs> we also know, if we, if we look and we take a less granular view, we look at uh, how people are using their phones. Apps account for about half of all minutes using the phone. Um, so you can see really how important those apps are. And then, again, if we look across operating systems, you start to see some differences, specifically between Apple and BlackBerry. So um, Apple, far less time spent making calls, for example, and much more time using apps, and that's all to do with the design of the phone. So we can also understand usage patterns. We can look, for example, when people are using apps across an average day, or even a specific day, we want to, when they're accessing the web, when they're messaging, and when they're making calls. So we can understand usage patterns and context of those usage patterns. We can also then plot that in terms of what kind of apps people are accessing. So you can see over on the far left corner, social apps. Um, in terms of reach and also time, uh, right up there. Whereas, and perhaps this will be talked about in, uh, in the workshop, let one of the workshops later on, you can see right down bottom corner, banking. So if, you're a, if you have a financial client or if you are a financial client, there's a bit of a problem here because you've got not enough people going to apps and when they do, they're not staying there for very long. We can also, again, aggregate the data in a slightly different way and look at the type of apps that people are going to, so news, sport and weather, <coughs> compared with social, compared with games, and look at that massive peak of accessing games apps in the evening. This was just doing an interesting comparison between uh, people shopping uh, using mobile phone de passive data and comparing that to our own touch points diary data. So we've got shopping via an app, then online shopping, so that online shopping could be via a PC or, a, or a, um, an iPad, and all shopping, so all shopping obviously includes going physically going into a shop. So understanding people's shopping habits when they go shopping what device they're choosing to use to do their shopping. 
obviously we will pick up um, how many apps people are going to and which are the top apps. And that will have a very, very long tail. So what we're going to ask people to do when they download this app onto their smartphone is carry that app for four weeks. So we'll have an idea over a four-week period of what are the apps that they're going into or indeed what websites they're going to. Again, we can look at that data slightly differently. Now, this, this test was done last year, so it's a bit out of date and it will have changed. But the interesting thing here for me was that if you look at Facebook, you've got a relatively high reach, i.e. lots of people using Facebook via an app, um, but actually not spending that much time. Whereas Twitter users spending far more time, but there were then fewer of them. So there's quite an interesting uh, tension going on there. And of course, um, for us in the media world, you can understand a competitive set. You can understand how BBC News may compete with Sky News or Mail Online, for example. So that's a real kind of snapshot of the sort of data that we will be able to pick up via passive data collection. It will be a massive addition to our data set and it will give us that level of granularity that we couldn't really get any other way. And really to stress the point that the collection of data will cover network access and Wi-Fi, so we're getting the full picture, not just half the picture. And of course, people who use this data will have the ability to cross-tab the passive data with the full touchpoint survey. So going back to that picture I showed you at the beginning, that 360 degree view of a target market, you'll have all of that, plus you'll know in detail what their uh, mobile phone usage is. So in terms of when the data will be available, we're going to launch touchpoints five, the hub data in spring of next year. Um, the channel planner, which is the bit where we integrate all the industry currencies, will follow about three months later. And the passive data, because we're collecting this passive data in four-week chunks, we start going into the field in about two weeks' time, and that will run until October. So, in fact, because we're getting that data in real time, we're going to have some data very, very soon, and I hope that we're going to be able to release some of that data as we go through to the autumn. And that's it. <laughs>